When you assign text to a constant or variable, we call that a string. Think of a whole row of Scrabble tiles strung together on a piece of string. Now in Swift, all your strings must start and end with double quotes. But what you put inside those quotes is down to you. For example, you could put a small text string in there, such as this one. Let actor equals Denzel Washington. You could also put punctuation, emoji, or other special characters in there. For example, let file name equals paris.jpg, or let result equals you win with a little star emoji either side. And you can even use double quotes inside your string as long as you remember to use backslashes before the inner double quotes. So Swift understands these inner backslashes, uh, these inner quotes, sorry, aren't ending the string. They are just inside the string. They matter. Don't worry, if you miss off the backslashes, Swift will shout loudly until your code is correct. Now, there is no realistic limit to the length of your strings. They can do short pieces of text up to the complete works of Shakespeare, for example. Huge strings. But what you'll find is that Swift needs to handle multi-line strings very carefully. This here, this quote is one uh, line of text, just soft wrapped by my presentation software, Keynote. But if you wanted a hard line break in there, you'll be really, really careful. For example, this kind of code is not allowed. Let movie equals a day in, line break, the life of an, line break, Apple engineer, quote. You can't say that. Swift will complain loudly. Instead, you've got to use special syntax. Rather than just one set of double quotes at the start and end, you've got to use three. Three at the beginning and three at the end to mark a multi-line string. It looks like this. Let movie equals, quote, 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 Line break, a day in, line break, the life of an, line break, Apple engineer, line break, triple quotes. These multi-line strings aren't used that often compared to single line strings, but at least you can see how it's done. The opening triple quotes and the closing triple quotes must be on their own line with your string in between. Now, once you've made your string, you'll find Swift gives us all sorts of useful functionality to work with its contents. And you'll find out more about this over time. But I want to give you a little glimpse of it, just to introduce you to three things here. First, you can read the length of a string by writing dot .count after the name of a variable or constant. I could say print actor dot .count. Now, Actor has the text Denzel Washington, so when I press play here, it'll have a little think and print out 17. That's how many characters there are in Denzel Washington. Now, you can count them, of course, but don't forget the space in the middle. Swift's very, very good with strings, including handling emoji correctly. So star is one emoji, as opposed to multiple internal characters. You don't need to print the name of the string directly, you could say something like uh, let name length equals actor.count and then print name length like that. Also works. You can assign it to a temporary constant. The second useful piece of functionality is called uppercase, which sends back the same string except every one of its letters is now uppercase. So I could say uh, print result.uppercase. And when that runs, we're going to see it shouting, you win. Uh, yes, I should say, uh, these open and close parentheses are needed here, but they aren't used with count. The reason for this will become clear as you learn more, but at this early stage in your Swift learning, the distinction is best explained like this. If you're asking Swift to read some data, you don't need the parentheses. But if you're asking Swift to do some work for you, then you do. It's not entirely true, but you'll learn later why it's enough to get you moving forward for now. The last piece of helpful string functionality I wanna show off now is called has prefix. And let us know if a string starts with some letters of our choosing. For example, I could say uh, print movie dot has prefix a day and print that. And it'll come back as true because it starts with a day and then in the life of an Apple engineer. It also has suffix for doing the uh, text at the end. You could say, for example, 
uh, print file name dot has suffix dot JPEG is a, a JPEG picture. Be careful. In Swift, as in many languages, strings are case sensitive. So you look for uh, a day with a lowercase a, for example, that'll return false because it starts with an uppercase a. Strings are really powerful in Swift. And honestly, we've just scratched the surface here of what they can do.